I don't understand you if you haven't gone to see if there's an example just like it. That's the first damn thing you do. Because if you went far enough in math, you get a book that has no examples in it. Just theory, 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 which is closer to real life. But thank God you're still at level. You just go back to see an example. They have an example. Solving this for y. Plugging in the calculator. Right. So how do I start to solve this thing for y? For y is zero. All right, wait, so what's happening? Can I take a square root right now? Yeah. yeah. I could, but it won't do shit for me. I really, if you do a square root, why have you made things worse? No, I mean, just as a square, I don't think you So trying to get this to be y equals something. Why is this step not a good step? Because where, the original problem, where's my y? It's here, right? And you're like, yes, that part I got, gotcha. Jeff. I know what the letter y looks like. But it's, it's relatively free. Because I can multiply by 16 eventually, I can move the x squared over 9 eventually, I can do all kind of stuff, it's free. But the minute I do this, now it's stuck inside a square root. Why would I do that to myself? If it was by itself, I could then take a square root and then it would become y. But it's not by itself, so I can't do that. So I, I, I want to get this term by itself first. So how do I start to do that? Wow, that's a lot. Uh, how do I get this by itself? Yeah, I can subtract x squared over 9. So then I get negative y squared over 16. All right, divide by negative 1. I like it, so that changes the sign. Is that cool? Yeah. What else is there you don't want there? Or, or you can actually, right now, you could do what to both sides? Now you got one term here, right? I could square root now. The minute you do a square root, you put plus or minus like. That's the problem. That's the key thing about why it's not a function. Can I write it in a single line? No. There's a positive thing and a negative thing. There's a positive part and a negative part. That's why it's not a function, because there's two halves sitting over each other like that. So this will be y over 4 equals plus or minus. Let me just turn this this way so it looks a little more like what I'm used to. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Positive x squared over 9 minus 1. Can I make this x over 3? Mm -hmm. I no. wish I could. No. But what's inside the radical that I can't act across? Negative. Subtraction, right? Square roots can't do that. They can't take square roots of each piece. They just don't have that kind of power. Too bad for them. And now one more step and I've got y by itself. Yeah, so it'll be y equals plus or minus 4 times this. And now that, I can put y1 is the positive 4 times blah, 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 and y2 is the negative 4 times blah, blah, blah. And graph those. And my suggestion is, to, is in the problem, it says use 21. I say use 25. You can see it a little bit better if you use 25. It makes more sense. Cool. All right. Maybe. Anything else from homework? Several of you didn't get this far, and you're like, I don't want to get that far now. There's only one problem like this. It's a good problem, because if I had a circle, how would I get it to graph in my graphing calculator? I have to do the exact same thing, don't I? I get a top part of the circle and a bottom part of the circle. That's the plus or minus that I get here. I really like that we're coming back to why is there a plus or minus there. We explained one way before. Now we see to get the top and bottom halves of the damn graph. That's a little more immediately visual. You can kind of see why the plus or minus has to be there. It's another way to think of it. It gets the top and the bottom part of the graph. Okay. You guys want to see what this looks like in the graphing calculator? Is that what's going on? No? You guys just want to forget this problem exists? Alright, so while that thing's warming up, anybody have any other questions from homework? Yes? Um, can you do an example from uh, the quiz that we just had on uh, 3E? I, uh, I never like 
teaching something this way, but now that we've discussed logarithms and so forth, I think everybody's, I think everybody, what was your problem? What was your, what did it say? Uh, 3D. Yes. What did it say? Or uh, log um, 25. Oh, five. Uh, yeah. All right, good. So everybody had, everybody's 3E was the same, except they were all different. All right, so uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, sounds like double speak jobs, too damn bad. So if I had log base 100 of 10, it's the exact same problem you had. Well, what's log base 10 of 100? That's easier. I wouldn't even need the base 10 there, but oh well, we'll just deal with it. No, because 10 to the 10th is not 100. 10 to the 5th is not 100. This only needs two 10s to multiply by 100, right? How many of these multiply to be this? Or what power does this need to become this? The same question. Because powers mean how many you've got multiplied, right? So again, it's all about knowing what the question is. Poor choice of symbol, I agree. Why did they use a little word to be a symbol Oh well, too bad, we weren't there, right? Actually, I'm happy I wasn't born then. Uh, lots of crap. But 10 squared is 100. That's what this symbol means. It's what we're looking for. So this can't be a number, you know, uh, log base of 100 would be 1. So this has got to be a number less than 1 to make it come back, come back down to 10. So if it takes two 10s to make 100, what do I do to 100 to make it come back to 10? I'll do the opposite of this. Yes. What do I do to 100 to make it become 10? I take a... What do I do to 100 to make it become 10? What do I do to it? That's not true right now. Make it true. Take a square root, which is a what power? Two, one half power. One half power. There you go, one half. Square root of 100 is 10. That's how to read that. How many 100s do you need to make 10? You need half of 100 multiplicatively. So, see how, what I mean? Yeah. Your answer is the same for different reasons. Yeah, basically everybody. Some of you guys had a third. You had to cut it down. Like, uh, what's log base eight of two? Just, why, why is it one third? Because oh, yeah. eight equals oh, three. Because yeah. you break eight up into three parts and you get two. That's why. Oh, inside? Yeah. <coughs> you, you know, like instead of the two. Like mine says. Log 49 and then 1 over 7. All right, cool. Was that your 3? I guess some people had... Yeah, it changed the order in some of them. At some point, you had a problem that looked like that. But then everybody else had a problem that looked like this. Um, sure, I'll just do this. Why not? I desperately want you to see. How, how would I tell you to do uh, this problem here if I wanted you to do this by hand? I was just feeling evil one day. I want you to do this by hand. Who remembers how I look at this? What's it tell me to do? It makes it flip, and then it makes it fourth power, right? And then you could do nine times nine times nine times nine by hand and cuss by hand and all that stuff. I wouldn't do that because we're past that. Uh, so if I can make that happen, how do I make that happen? I just make whatever power I get for this, I make it negative because that'll make it flip. So we already know what makes that happen. What power makes that happen? One half. Square root of 100, so 1 half. Now I just got to make it negative to make it flip. So if the inside is a fraction less than 1, it's going to be a negative answer. It's kind of nifty. Why? Because that's, I got to flip it to make it become a fraction less than 1. But at the same time, you could also be cutting that thing down, so it's got to be a square root at the same time. You're, you're, the way you attack these problems, you have. You, sh you have a, the ability to attack these problems because you know what the question is with this. You know what that's asking you. What power do I need? And some powers are also roots because they're fractional. You can also say, what root do I take of this when this number is smaller than this one, right? So if I saw what's log base 125 of 5, that's smaller than this, but not less than 1. So it's not going to be negative. It's just going to be some kind of root. And what root do I take of 125 to make it become 5? Third root. I like it. So if it was one fifth, that would be negative one third. Because now it's a number less than one. The only way to make that happen is a negative power, make it flip, become a fraction. So 
is really just analyzing, do you really understand roots and powers? That's, that's what logs are about. And of course, you have to understand what the question is. What, do I, what power does this need to become this? Or what root does this need? Same question, to become this. It kind of sounds like you could also do it where how many buys would on 25? Is. Totally, and then just flip it, exactly. And I would never teach it that way because then you don't know why that works. But if what's log base 5 of 125? Three. Three. So what's log 125 5? It must be one third. If you have to increase the five by, you know, if they have to have three of these to make this, one third of these makes this. Does that make sense? So yes, you could do it that way, but now I'm okay with doing that right now because now I've talked about why it makes sense it works that way. I like it. Okay, maybe. Oh shit, we're gonna do that here. <laughs> so let's do this, let's see. Oh, shisa. all right. Oh, oh well, that good plan. The computer is having a rough day. Um, What's up? So if you have a calculator, you can play along. Oh, cool. Yeah, Desmos. No, it's okay. The graphic calculator is what everybody has access to on the day of the test. So here I'm going to put this, positive this, and negative this. So I'm going to put positive 4 times the square root of, what was it, x squared divided by 9 minus 1. I guess I don't need that. I'm so used to the old stuff. All right, so that's the positive root. Is that cool? That's going to be the top part of my hyperbola. And then to get the bottom part, I do the negative. I won't show them what I showed you, Keanu. They can come to my office and stuff. Negative 4 times the square root of x squared divided by i minus 1. Oh, shit, it came out. You see what I just did? Yeah. Minus, now I'm inside. Okay, good. So always make sure everything's going where it's supposed to go. So that will, the y1 is in blue. I love it. That'll be the top part of the hyperbola. So let's see what happens. Oh, my, let's make my window the way it's supposed to be. So the window. Oh shit, look at all the weirdness. Let's do zoom six. Oh, that's weird. I shouldn't be able to see. Oh, that's right, that's right, I forgot. This is not the same as the book. So you don't have to change the window for this one at all. What does zoom six do again? Do you remember zoom six? It's a really good button to know. Standard, yeah. Standard which is negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. is a great place to start. And then you go to window if you need to change things. So that, does it look like what we thought it should look like? Yeah, totally. Did you put Y2? You got this down here? Yeah. How are we doing? We're good? Mine skips over the X line. Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. Is that normal? Totally. In fact, mine did too. You just can't really see it too well. Yeah. Yeah, that's really close. Okay. So it's got a little skip in there. You can't see because it it's the line. The reason it does that is because uh, when the graphing calculator graphs, it actually makes a table of values. You can imagine its table of values are much more like it goes negative 1.00002, negative 1.00001. You with me? It makes a very detailed because it can do it freaking quick. That's what calculators do. But right there, the X is aren't changing much at all, right? So it, it, it jumps, it, it's not, the resolution isn't good enough. That's really the quick way to say why that doesn't work. If I zoomed in, it would do better, because when I zoom in, it does more and more precise inputs. But the resolution isn't good enough for that. In fact, if you did a circle, first off, it wouldn't look like a circle, because it's my window square. No, so the dimensions are off, so it would look more like Stewie's head, right? And the ends wouldn't meet for the same reason. The resolution isn't good enough. Good. Doesn't mean in real life that they don't connect. Of course they do. I just had to put the top and bottom halves together, and like in real life, they sometimes don't meet the right way. Yeah. Maybe. 
There's an example exactly like this. Steps you through every single step. And you just do the same thing. You got slightly uglier numbers for the Halley's Comet problem because they're actual numbers from real life. It's crazy. All right. So yes, that's an equation that models the motion of a comet that comes by the Earth. Hello. Thank you, math. Holy shit. I know some of you guys are not impressed, but you should be. Okay. Not with me. I didn't make it up. I just know how to use it. With math itself, you should be impressed. So any other questions? <laughs> no, Jeff. No, you didn't make that happen for me. Anything else from homework? All right. So let's do the one new thing, uh, and then we'll start doing a review. The one semi-new thing, and for those of you on math, math Lab, I put it up there this morning. As always, you just have to, you know, email me and let me know if something's not there. It's amazing how that works. Um, so here's the one new thing. And this is really from section 14.3. And this is the only thing, if you weren't here last time, the only homework assignment for chapter 14 is page... Page for you. 934, 27 to 38. Does everybody understand what I just said? Mm -hmm. That is the only homework assignment you're responsible for from chapter 14. 14 1 and 14 2 are kind of relatively easy and they're not immediately applicable to I mean this is a more general idea that you desperately need, especially for statistics and for some other higher math. You need it in pre-calculus, you need it in calculus. This idea of what the hell this thing is, right? Besides, I drew it really badly, but I don't care. So this is the this is the Greek, you did it just about as bad, Jeff. This is the Greek letter sigma. This is the uppercase sigma. In statistics, the lowercase sigma that looks like a really fat R, an R that had a really good life. R, R, R. All right. It says his name as it eats things. It's weird. Uh, that's the lowercase sigma. So in, st in statistics, that stands for the spread number I keep giving you. Remember the spread number I give you when I give you average grades on a quiz or something until the spread? This is what that means. We don't need that for now. Just to show you, we love using Greek letters for statistics. You'll see what I mean if you get there. Um, so this letter, this is the Greek letter S, basically. This is the Greek letter S. And the reason we chose that to mean what it means is because it's the first letter in the, in the word sum. So this stands for the sum of something. So the letter sitting here by itself, I can describe. What, sort of like if I said, here's what this symbol means. This symbol means you cut something in half multiplicatively, right? But if I said, simplify this, what would you say? If I gave you this as a problem, simplify this, what would you say to me? Simplify what? Yeah, there's nothing in it. So right here, there's nothing in it. So this is just like the square root of. This is the sum of something. So here's, here's the idea. If I said, sum up the numbers, what numbers? Okay, now I've got to get specific. Sum up the numbers from 1 to 5. That's how to read this in English. Sum up the numbers from 1 to 5. So how do you think you would start to write that out? So see how to... Yeah, I like, yeah. 1 plus 2 plus 3. So n starts at 1. And then you add. The next n value would be 2. And then you add 3. And then you add 4. And then you add 5. And you get, that's crazy. So this is a relatively simple idea, but this symbol is used in so many places. And you can see why. There's so many times in math that we just got to add a bunch of shit up. And I want to be able to tell somebody very quickly what I want you to add up. So this symbol is remarkably useful. No idea. So what's the difference between what I just did, and besides my E is getting worse, Sigma, sorry. So you 
I love it. The way you said it is perfect. You square each number. So what am I summing up? I'm summing up the squares of every number from 1 to 5. So what would that look like? Yeah, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. I love how you guys just pounce on that. It's always just going to use like four numbers. Yeah, 55. 55. No, you could expand. We, we're going to just use whole numbers. It, normally, it just uses whole numbers. There are some cases where you can use some weird shit, but normally this will be whole number stuff. If I wanted to use fractions, I could put in here n over 4 or something. I can kind of control this. This The reason we use a, a letter n here normally is because it stands for natural numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So very often you'll see an n here, but it could be extended to mean more than that. But the basic use of it is whole numbers and natural numbers. Yeah? Um, I know that you're giving an example of 1 and 5, but is there another Good. Example? All right. Good. I love it. Rebecca says, I know this shit's going to get harder, Justin. Bring it on. <laughs> Uh, and, and I can't make it that much harder. Now, let me, let me just throw this at you and see what you think. Uh, that's going to mess us up. All right, here's another example. Do we always have to use X for the variable? No. We've used Y. I've used M. I use, I use every freaking letter in the alphabet, I believe. I've used Mr. Bill once. Excuse me. If you were here that day, you might remember. Uh, so N is the normal thing we use, like X is the normal thing we use. Well, now I'm just using I who gives a shit. It means the same thing. But it didn't go from 1 to 5. Now I'm going from 7 to 10, so I only focus on those. But now this is like a little equation, right? So I can kind of do this for myself. So what is I at first? 7. Let me put it down here. So it'll be 7 squared minus 7. Plus, that's the main idea of this symbol, right? It adds all the pieces together. Now, I is what? I is 8. Now, I is 9. Now, I is... I do be 10. That's right. Yes, sir? So, that has nothing to do... You wouldn't look at that as I as an Oh, no, no, no. Good point. No. This is the one place we use the letter I, and it's understood to be okay. And the reason we use the letter I, this is the second most common thing, is because this is called the index of the sum symbol. This is the index. So I, J, K are the main three for certain types of applications. N is the main one you would see in an algebra class, because then it's more directly related to natural numbers. An imaginary number, but... You'd have to make it really clear that that's what you mean. Okay. Here, it's here. the minute I see it here, I know it means a variable. From this value to this value. So I'm glad you said that, because my brain just knows automatically this is not complex, because it's used with summation symbol. I know it's not square root of negative 1. But you guys are like, what the hell, that's I. No, this is a variable for this sum symbol. I like it. And then you just got to do that. Not a big deal. What do you get? 260. 260? Sweet. All right. I like it. So is that difficult? So let me let me let me give you this. <laughs> I know. It, it's 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 easy, but you just gotta remember that. If who's taking statistics again? Like uh, sixty percent of the formulas in stats, it's a made up statistic, but it's roughly right, has uh, this symbol in it. So the more you understand what the symbol is asking you to do the more you can handle those formulas, right? So what, what about this? Let me give this to you. Uh, so I want you, for, this, for these, I want you to do this. Now see how this is defined a little bit differently? I gave you the values, and now I'm asking you to do that. So but what's that asking you to do? I ask you to, to do what? Add up the X's. X's. Divided, by divided by. Now, what do you think this means? Number the number of X's. I like it. So try it out. Do it. So you're adding, you're adding, you're adding, you're adding, you're adding 
We never multiplied so we're making them. An average. We never multiplied. Here, what did I do with this summation? I added this and added this. The summation symbol means add. So add up the x's and then divide by how many there are. Seven. 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 Yeah, you're getting a seven because what are you actually doing when you do that, of course? This is how you take the average. average. So this is a formula in statistics, the most basic formula in statistics. This means average. Add them all up and divide by how many there are. That's the average, also known as the mean. Okay, but again, we barely scratched the surface of how this can be used. But you know, this is a good place to start. Okay, so the, every problem that you have to do is related to what we just did. It's exactly that idea. I like it. Nothing crazy, hard. Okay. <clears throat> what was it? Oh, one last thing related to this. Let me just throw this at you. There's an urban legend in math. There's actually several urban legends, but this is the most famous one. Uh, this little dude, Gauss, he did a lot of stuff. Uh, Gauss. So if you work with magnetism, you know, that's like units of, of strength of magnetism for one thing. But Gauss did a lot of statistical stuff. He got the what's called the normal curve kind of thing and so forth. Uh, it's called the Gaussian curve in honor of him. But also supposedly when he was like 10, he was in class and the class was going crazy. And the teacher's like, oh my God. So the teacher says, okay, everyone, I don't know what country he's from, uh, add up the numbers 1 through 100, and you're not allowed to talk until you're done. And then he sat down and started reading the paper. That would take a while. Uh, and Gal, supposedly, he got done in like nine seconds. He brought it up to the dude. He says, I got the answer. And the guy's like, you just wrote a number down. You don't know. So he, he sat down and he did 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, and it took the teacher forever. And he's like, you got the right answer. How the hell did you do that? So there's a quick way. Some of you guys might know this. There's a quick way to do this. What's 199? Well, what's 1 plus 100? 101. 101. What's 2 plus 99? How many 101s are you going to have? So every pair of numbers makes a 101. 50. You're going to have 50 of those. So what he did was he said, there's how many of them? There's 100. Cut that in half because I want that many pairs. And then he realized that the first number, this is how we say the first number, plus the last number is going to be repeated this many times. So that's a little formula for if you have any sequence that increases by the same amount. See how it always increases by one, of course? So if I was always increasing by two, you can use that exact same formula. And what's really neat is you get a funky-ass number here. What's 50 times 101? 50-50. That's kind, of, that's kind of freaky. The sum of the first 100 natural numbers is 50-50. Right? Where are you going to use that in your daily? I don't know. I don't give a care. Uh, this is more important. Finding a quicker way, utilizing a pattern that we see to be able to evaluate something. That's a big part of what math is. I just want to throw that at you, so. All right. No. This is a. Huh? Oh, well, this is in section 14.1 or 14.2, one of those two sections. They talk about more specific sequences, right? Uh, well, unfortunately, we just that's one I had to throw out. This is relatively easy, right? Which is why I'm okay with throwing it out, because it doesn't take that long to explain it to you if you need it somewhere in the future. The summation symbol, you've got to kind of understand what that means. That's really quick to get, but that's that's used everywhere. You've got to know what it means when you get in there. Okay. So that's all I need you to be able to do from Chapter 14 is use that summation symbol correctly. All right, so any questions on that? All right, so what we're going to do, uh, I've got the answer key for most of the problems. I kind of wanted to do the last, oh shoot, no, I don't have any. Uh, that last problem, it refers to page 903. Number four through nine. So I wanted to do that, all of us now.
So if you, you can group up, especially if you don't have a book, you probably want to group up. I didn't put these answers on the answer key because I didn't feel like it. So <laughs> I'm going to put you guys to work. We're going to do it together, and then you'll know how to do these. These are related to the most recent th stuff we did, the conic sections, ellipses, hyperbolas.